present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we're here. Happy Saturnalia Brumalia, also otherwise or also known as Merry Pagan Christmas. This is our uh, Happy Saturnalia, hold on. This is our official Happy Saturnalia Brumalia Pagan Christmas Week of 2014. Yeah, the Brumalia is the 24th. 24th. Oh, 24th, which, which is the pagan Christmas Eve. Yeah. That's Brumalia. Saturnalia is uh, falls... I think the whole seven days or whatever. Okay. Alright, so I was acting. Worship of Saturn. The, the pagan, the God yeah. Saturn. God Saturn, which, which uh, brings is a very negative god. He has to do with the underworld and death. But regardless, I guess it depends on what culture. Um, this is where we're at. Forget about uh, all everything you were taught <clears throat> as you were growing up, all these man-made traditions, because they're all based on paganism. Jesus was not born in December. So but, therefore you can't put Christ in Christmas. Oh, don't listen to like those. the right wing is called. I'll listen like. to those right wing zealot, yeah. religious nut, cultist, holy rollers. They don't know what they're talking about. Exactly. Putting Christ in Christmas. Not even Christ uh, put Christ in Christmas. But they got big television shows and etc., which they they screw with your mind. With no, I know they don't screw with my mind because oh, my mind. I refuse to watch them because they're nauseating. All these Christmas songs, Christmas carols, uh, Christmas commercials, um, you know, where, where the, uh, the uh, wicked, uh, greedy retail industry keeps on pounding their, sh their guilt into your skull. And, and the uh, Ebenezer Scrooge movies, you know, Christmas Carol, where, where they, they lay a guilt trip on you if you don't go out and spend all your money and then some. And you know, use your charge, uh, your credit card. Spend money that you don't have to buy presents every year for the same loved ones. Most of them complain profusely about what they got. They, what? Well, there's a lot of um, hey, this is America. Americans, you know, uh, 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 especially if they're young, they want exactly what they want oh, yeah. when they want it. We're teaching them to be uh, very gracious. And altruistic people, aren't we? Uh, yeah, well, it's a, it's a what young... What are they, all uh, little iron rands? Yeah, it's a young society of, uh, of hedonism, materialism. Uh, you know, it's a feel-good society where they, they want, uh, they place their happiness on materialism and, and um, they don't appreciate the thought. Remember, remember the old saying that it's the thought that counts? Well... How much is the thought? How much is your thought? Yeah. Oh, your thought? Oh, what did you get me for for uh, uh, pagan Christmas? Ah, you you didn't put much thought into this gift. <laughs> no, you didn't put so much money into this gift. Right, which e thought. which to them equals thought. Hey, I gave it a thought. What the hell do you want? But uh, come on. Old James will never be caught stuck in traffic or waiting on long lines in retail stores because if I want anything whether it be for me or another person, I'll go to Google Shopping, I'll find out who has it, and find out who has the best price for it. And quite often, the shipping free. cost is free. Shipping and the mysterious, mysterious handling, handling charges. Hey, until they screw that up. Well, anything, internet. anything good is always until they screw it up. They will screw it up, uh, the internet, uh, so that big business benefits. Well, period. There's such a thing America is called boycotting. Well, even even worldwide, you boycott. You see what the boycott? You don't believe is with in Cuba? boycott. 
54 years of boycotting. What did it do? Who boycotted for 54 years? The United States, Cuba. I'm getting to that. No, I'm talking about the products made by the big corporations in America, like Nestle's and so on and so forth. You don't buy their products. First of all, you don't know all of their products. That, that's a start. Uh, that, that's before you boycott, it's good to know everything they make and who they own, yeah, what companies they, they own. they keep that secret from you. You see? You can't get around the big businesses unless you regulate them. And you ain't gonna you, you, regulate you them. You seem to be... Um, a uh, realist. No, you're not. You, 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 you're. Yeah, you're a realist, but you're also yeah. partially pacifist, because you see that ha you got no fight in you when it comes to the corporations. Did you ever see Braveheart? Yeah. You did. What happened to him at the end? They all got killed. Didn't they? That's correct. Because they weren't prepared to fight. I think they they wage war against the the evil king of England at the time. Uh, uh, too soon, too quickly. They needed they were more. Not prepared. They needed more strategy behind their the the, the battle. They needed. And to right now, who has the high ground? The businesses, right. not the people. So what Mel Mel Gibson and the Scottish, the Scots did, was they um, they they went off uh, based on emotion. And, and and pep talks and hypes and they uh -huh. just they just ran into battle without any uh, preparedness. So, um, uh, military. They, sometimes they run into battle without their kilt, you know. Military military uh, strategy. Roddy, roddy roddy rowdy 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 five percent. Oh, um, the Iron Sheik used to call him that. It's the rowdy rowdy ready roddy 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 piper. Well, he said that on the uh, on the uh, storage wars. Uh, Barry got a kilt, and he took it to Rowdy and Rowdy Piper to see how much it was worth. Did Roddy know? Yeah, about a thousand bucks. Why, is Roddy Piper sometimes on storage wars? No, he, he just owned the place where Barry went to find out the price. Oh, once, they, once, they get, once they buy a storage locker, they check what's in it. And if they find something unique or something, they go to some place like an antique dealer or something who knows something about it and tells them what it's worth. Okay, now, listen, for those of you that are not familiar with kilts, because, you know, you look at a kilt, Americans are like, um, they're, they're quick to make fun of other people and mock them out, no. be judgmental. They look at a kilt and they go, ah, ha, ha, they look at that Look at that dude in a dress, in a skirt rather. That dude is wearing a skirt. The pattern of the kilt represents the clan that you you originated from. Every kilt has a different pattern. It's they call it the tartan. The tartan. Tartan. And that's it, it, it signifies, it identifies your clan. It also had many uses. It was a cover at night. Uh, it's easy to take a crap, you know? It's easy to bang somebody? Well, I'm talking about going into oh. battle here. And then you, oh. um, <laughs> and then, uh, what was I going to say? Like, like for instance, the, Sc the uh, Scotch Whiskey Company, Clan McGregor. Clan McGregor. Clan McGregor. Those that are part of the McGregor clan have a tartan, a certain pattern of tartan. And these are the kilts they wore. And this, they have like a sash too, I think. That, that is made up of the same pattern. And their little pouch. They have a pouch. Oh, for their coins? No, I don't Monetary. know what they have carry in. Anyway, it was totally un unplanned and accidental that we, we talked about kilts. Yes, it was. And it just so happens that the scarf, the holiday scarf that I'm wearing, which is brand new, looks like a Scottish tartan. There you go. Just totally coincidental. coincidental. You know what you know what I would actually let me throw them in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Uh -oh. And you might you you have a similar problem about what I'm gonna talk about. Uh -huh. 
I will never, never, ever, and I repeat, never, ever attempt to use super glue again. Sometimes called crazy glue. It comes out liquidy. And, oh, it definitely works. But it makes a horrible mess. And I ruined something that I was supposed to be gluing. And I ruined it because even though I carefully used it, it got all over around the entire item. Uh, got on my fingers. I, uh, of course, when you use glue, and it's it's not a tiny tube, it the cap gets glued onto the glue, and sometimes the whole thing gets hard, dries out when it, the air is. Only good for one use. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> even though, even if I wipe it with a wet paper towel, it doesn't do any good. So, <clears throat> got it on my fingers. Got it all over the product. I go online, I go to Google, and I type in uh, how to remove super glue. Well, I follow the instructions. It said use nail polish remover, which is ac ac acetone. Acetone. Yeah. No, 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 no. acetone. Yeah. Thank you. Acetone. <laughs> and, uh, or you can you also use rubbing alcohol, and for your skin, you can use simple vegetable oil. Well, guess what? All three did nothing. Ah! As far as the super glue on my fingers, which made them feel numb, only time, hot water, and soap was the only answer to that, and time. But as far as the other things with the acetone, doesn't work. So, you know, you glue manufacturers, try to come up with a way where, you know, people can use their glue without having to throw away the bottle. Yeah. And uh, well, but you know what? I will give them credit. The makers of Gorilla Glue. I have Gorilla Glue for wood, and it doesn't do any of the things I mentioned. I mean, as far as you know, drying and and gluing the cap and all that, comes out like Elmer's, you know, like um, uh, white creamy right. glue. So I will say good things about Gorilla Glue, but as far as super glue, I'll never use it again. Shame on you, Chisler's Hall of Shame, inductee. All right, now, I already said it, Happy Saturnalia, Brumalia. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com backslash megalife21, you will see at the top, uh, as the, the trailer for the YouTube channel, the, uh, the video called The Christmas Lie by the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. And I suggest, uh, highly recommend that you listen to it. And uh, you can find also other videos. And hopefully there'll be. Online about two uh, the history of, the real history of Christmas. Hopefully there will be two new ones, uh, the regular article and how to defeat a conservative <coughs> up there. If I can get to them tomorrow. Oh yeah, there's a there's a brand we'll new read new, them. There's a brand new newsletter. Yeah. Uh, 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 hot off the pancake. Hot weather. off it. For, the, for, the, for this season. Smoking inside the house, Gribble. The last newsletter of 2014. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, as you can see, our uh, happy Saturnalia. Happy Romalia, Trio. Pagan Christmas. We got the uh, the nut clackers. Clack, clack on. <laughs> clack off the clacker. <clears throat> and then we have right here this skinty, the skinny Satan Claws. There you go. Okay, Satan Claws, which is also based on paganism. All right, Satan Claws, but he's slim and trim. Well, I asked somebody a question the other day. I don't know whether it appeared or something, but uh, what the hell does Santa Claus have to do with the birth of Jesus? He was concocted later to get people to spend their money in retail. Yeah, hundreds and hundreds of years later. Same thing with Rudolph, Red Nosed Reindeer, yeah. and all the songs. They're all created yeah. for the big retail chains way back in the day and like, in the United States. And like the sleigh, the, the Yule. The, the, this is all comes from uh, 
countries that are cold. Cold. Reindeer, the, uh, the Christmas know? tree itself, is from paganism. Now what the hell does that have to do with Judea? You know, Israel and etc. What the hell does any of that have to do? All of the traditions that you grew up with have nothing to do with the Judeo-Christian <coughs> religion or the Bible. No, with the birth of Jesus. Jesus didn't, in that part of the world. Jesus didn't tell anyone to uh, to celebrate anybody's birthday. No, of course not. But that's why his is secret. And because pe <clears throat> people have a way of worshiping the thing. Relics? Yes. Whatever happened to... Uh, <clears throat> the golden calf. There you go. Rather than the spirit. After Moses uh, set the Israelites free from bondage, from slavery, from Egypt, and he went through all that trouble with the, the plagues he put on Pharaoh and then he went all the way up the mountain, I guess it was Mount Sinai, brought down the Ten Commandments and saved their asses. That's the thanks he got by them turning their back on Moses and God and uh, creating the pagan uh, golden calf idol which mm -hmm. happens to be in effect today with the conservative right wing and their worship of money Mm. which is idolatry mm. and um, we definitely will see a lot of it being that you uh, imbecilic uh, stupid imbecilic nincompoops mm -hmm. in America reelected uh, and put the Republicans in control of the Congress and the Senate thank you very much for sealing your own doomed fate well we see exactly <coughs> what they did uh, right Given the breaks to big oil and etc. and then and, and, and Wall Street with their first bill. A spending bill yet. They slipped all that crap into it. Alright, before I forget, let me give greetings. Greetings and salutations. To my near dear, very close friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Happy happy holidays to me. I'm gonna sneeze. That's okay, go ahead. Sneeze. It's a lot better than the heating system racket. Um, and I like to say, give holiday, uh, pagan holiday greetings to uh, former, my friend, uh, the former WWE star, Mr. Ken Thiessen, and, and uh, personal trainer extraordinaire from uh, now down in Boca Raton, Florida. Greetings to Ken. Uh, um, pagan season's greetings to uh, my other friends, Anthony, Laura, uh, Mario Petrus of Petrus Fitness, greetings. Uh, Roberto uh, Chiki, okay, of the uh, Facebook group Modern Medical Quackery. Ooh. I send you greetings. Uh, to my uh, <coughs> two administrators, uh, Jolton Joe Stebbins and uh, uh, Sash Boyle, Pagan Seasons, greetings. Um, uh, let's see. Who can I throw in the mix? Uh, that's about it. Yeah. Well, um, uh, yeah. That's about, that's about all the names I can pronounce. Uh -huh. I know some people, but I can't, you know, some others I would like to say hi to, but I can't pronounce their last names. <laughs> let's see. Uh, all right. That's, that's it. That's good enough. All right, now, before I um, read what I'm going to say, <clears throat> I congratulate Barack Obama for uh, opening up, uh, for, for lifting and ending the uh, embargo with uh, Cuba. And I would like to say uh, 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 happy holidays to the uh, people of Cuba because the embargo only hurt the poor people of Cuba and not the Castro family and um, so speaking of wait do you know the number one crop that Cuba used to sell to the United States hemp sugar well uh, rum uh, Cuba the Bacardi rum uh, company originally was Cuban and they moved to Puerto Rico I guess after Castro took uh, power but uh, Cuba makes, ver you know, hat made Bacardi rum. Well, rum Bacardi. So well, yeah, it's the made number from one crop was sugar. It's made from sugar cane, and that was the big 
you know, boycott that America did 54 years ago, I think in 1961 or whatever. I guess 16. obesity was not on the rise back then in America if well, they boycotted sugar. You know, well, we got sugar from uh, elsewhere. We got our own with beet Listen, sugar and et cetera. Come any, on. Any, any tropical region can grow sugar cane. Cuba, though, grow it the best. Grew because, it the well, best. Cuba is a very, very large Caribbean island. They have plenty of room to grow many well, things. That's what they did. And, um, you know, uh, from what I understand, uh, the sugar cane is an African crop, and when they started the slave trade and they started bringing slaves over from Africa, they brought sugar cane. Mm -hmm, well. with it but you know it'll grow in any uh, tropical environment but so that's what they did so anyway apparently maybe you've heard the details of this but apparently uh, Rand Paul of Kentucky has been bucking heads with uh, Florida's uh, douchebag Marco Rubio over ending the embargo with Cuba I, I believe Rand Paul called Marco Rubio an isolationist and these are two yeah. Republicans yeah. that are bucking heads. Uh, we have a global economy, as everyone well knows. And uh, like I said before, the embargo only hurts the poor people of Cuba. Yeah, but that's not the issue even. And Mr. Marco Rubio and et cetera should take th time to think this through. It didn't work! Of course not. Well, the war on drugs didn't work. Because you can't have a war on something like that. It's like the war on terrorism or the war on war drugs. On poverty. The war on poverty. And just say no. Uh, what is that, Nancy Reagan? Just say just no say to drugs. No. Yeah, yeah, drugs. Right. Just say no. Sure. Yeah. yeah, and then you had uh, 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 Sarah Palin's daughter, Bristol Palin, Palin saying... Uh, just, just say war on premarital sex. Ju just say no to sex. <laughs> Abstinence. Makes the heart grow fond. Makes the heart grow fond. <laughs> uh, oh, that was cute. That was cute. Thank you. Thank you. Makes ma absence makes the cock grow harder. Hey. You know what I mean? But anyway. Uh, so that's it. So what? What do you know about the? You know anything about uh, this bucking heads between Rand Paul and Mr. Marco Rubio? Marco Rubio is a immigration fearing Republican, whereas Rand Paul is a libertarian. Well, hold on. Hold on. It seems like all Republicans have a problem with immigration. Yeah, Unless you're them. coming from Europe and you're Caucasian. Most of them do. And uh, Except when they hire them for cheap wages to make their beds and take care of their lawns. Yeah, landscape. Then it's okay. Cleaning their Olympic size in-ground pools. Pool. Yes, then yeah. it's okay. The gardening, the cooking, the cleaning, yeah. uh, working for them in manufacturing for chicken feed and, and they love them washing their dishes in their restaurants and yes. in their home then they have no problem no problem whatsoever with people with immigrants of color mm -hmm. they happen to maybe coming over that southern border be illegal yeah they have no problem with it they're very uh i guess they're opportunistic people, very selfish and greedy, cheap, cheap, cheap. greedy stingy, uh, yeah, selfish, I said that already, corrupt. Uh, it, everything is pointed towards profit. How much they can make, how much more they can make, and how much more can they save, which adds to their profit. That's all the Republican is preoccupied with. Save? Can they take it with them? No. So as it stands right now, they can't give it all to their children. Of course, they will be changing those laws very soon, so that they can they can transfer the whole damn thing to their children. Well, they're like Pharaoh in Egypt. They want to. They think they can bring it all with them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Isn't that funny? I heard a story, a uh, true story, from um, Mario Petrus. Of uh, I told the story before. Uh, the woman owned a small restaurant and takeout establishment that made uh, outstanding uh, Greek and Middle Eastern type foods like gyros and things like that, slovlaki, souvlakis and whatever. Anyway, um, one of the best, if, if not the best, in all of northeastern New Jersey. The woman was crossing the street. Uh, one time uh, near her restaurant, near her little, little takeout place, and she was uh, she was uh, hit and and dragged by a New Jersey Transit bus and died. So, you know, rich people or successful people or rich, successful and famous people it doesn't take long to be taken out of this world. They all we all end up the same. The worms get you in the ground. What's that one? The worms. The graves are the same for a poor person and uh, nobody. For a poor slob, for a poor homeless person that nobody knows about or cares about, goes into the same hole as a multi-billionaire that or a famous person. That's it. You know, I mean. Uh, dust thou came from, and dust dust thou art. Hey, when when when, when poor uh, Whitney Houston died and she was buried, her grave is the same as as a nobody, without a, a nickel, without two nickels to rub together. The same grave, you can't take it with you. So you better um, put it make, to good use. Make peace with your maker and do just do the right thing. You know, don't. It's not about being affiliated with an organized religion or um, a, a political party. It's about doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, if you don't know what the right thing is, how are you going to do it? You mean if you're a sociopath? Yeah. Well, you don't have to be a sociopath, but just uh, have your. It's a matter of where you have your focus. Yeah. In life. And most of those people you're talking about usually have their focus on getting more and getting more and getting more. And then sometimes they are so unscrupulous that it doesn't matter where they get the more or how they get the more. The ends justify the means? That's correct. Well, it would be nice if uh, trickle-down economics were real if all the jobs and industry from America, from the United States, were kept in the United States and there wasn't any outsourcing, then trickle-down economics might work. But it never did because the conservatives that love to deregulate, which allows them to do anything they want to us, lie to us and rip us off, Okay, they all outsource the jobs, so trickle-down economics never work. It is siphon up to the top 20% oligarch, the devil's economics. Siphon up is what we have, and that's it. This is a siphon. For those nincompoops out there that don't know what that is. It's the system, stupid. That's the title of the new uh, article in the new newsletter censored. It's the system, stupid. Get it. Okay. Um, that's really about it because we we covered, I believe last week, but but it's 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 an ongoing thing in in the news. I don't know if it's an ongoing thing in the local mainstream news, but it's a definitely uh, big news about the Republican Congress giving the okay for Wall Street to be able to gamble with our money again, as and, well as an, an increase in corporate welfare. Well, what happened there, 
they struck out the part in the Dodd-Frank bill which would not allow the taxpayer to bail them out again. They struck that out. So the taxpayer is on the hook again. When more they money. go about their business. More, more money stealing from the mainstream. That's correct. More of your, your hard-earned tax money, middle, right. middle class tax money, yeah. primarily. Brought to you by your friendly Republican. The ones that you re-elected. Yeah. Yeah. They are, uh, what's happening is, it sounds like the CEOs of these of corporate America are just snapping their fingers and, and requesting what they want. And City Group wrote the bill. It's a corporate plutocracy or oligarch. Well, now it's an oligarch. Now, until, you know, until they start getting fighting amongst themselves, and then, you know, they would turn it into a plutocracy. But, you know, it is an oligarch. It is a plutocracy. They're all synonymous, these words. Yeah. It just means rule by the elites. A, a form of totalitarian government. Well, depending on what they do with that rule. Well, the top it's twenty, the top twenty percent will be an oligarch. If we want to get scientific and nitpicky about it, I said they're all synonymous. Yeah. Well, not, accor not according to Merriam-Webster, they're not, but they're, they're, they, they are more Miriam or less. Merriam-Webster can, you know, divide it down as he would, but they're all synonymous, interchangeable. They just mean rule by the elites. Now you can divide the elites into yeah. corporations. You can divide them into plutocrats. You can. It's all elites. So now the Tea Party um, imbeciles. Uh, they they accuse Barack Obama of being a totalitarian uh, leader. <laughs> totally disregarding the Republican Congress. Well, because and they, the Koch brothers. They are using the word totalitarian incorrectly. Do you want to? Uh, uh, talk to Mr. Merriam-Webster. Totalitarian means that it is uh, coming down on you like a military. Military dictatorship. Yeah. That would be uh, like uh, that would be totalitarian. When Saddam Hussein was alive, that was totalitarian. Running Iraq, yeah. or Joseph Stalin uh, running the Soviet Union. Back then, Mr. That, Kim Il Ung yeah. in North Korea. Chubby face. Yeah. He has a very cherubic look. It's like a cherub. Well, Mr. Kim Ung Il has just censored Sony Pictures in America. Sony no belong. Because he won't allow that movie out. It was a movie about uh, the interview. What is it? The CIA trying to bump off him? Actually, from what I see, it's Seth Rogen and the other guy, and they are journalists. Yeah. And the journalists go in there and try to knock them off. But, you see, Sony capitulated. Okay? Did not give up. Huh? Capitulate. Did not give gave up. Gave up! Oh, they you know, gave up means... They're not the releasing yeah. the picture. Yeah, gave up when you That's capitulate. Good. They are not releasing the picture. Now, if they were smart, they would have released it on the internet for free. Ah, that reminds me. Do not go to Put Locker to watch movies. Foot Locker? Put Locker. What the hell is that? It's a place where you can go and watch free movies. If you want your goddamn computer to be sending out failed mail deliveries all over the friggin place oh really yeah this, oh really this is a, a website it is a website oh. which is bug put locker put that's correct put locker you know um, I went there the other day and saw into the darkness one of the new Star Treks and the next day when I opened up my mail program all right. There were 250 undeliverable mails mailed out from my 
computer. The corrupt, uh, um, 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 you mean, you mean, you think, uh, you think many of these uh, free movie websites uh, are yeah. designed to uh, infiltrate your and behind the movie hack it to your eventually accounts. the movie starts slowing down because what is behind it 10 or 12 other websites which they throw up on you well I've been um my experience is every time I ever went to a free movie website, um, I never saw a free movie. It, it was there all there was a catch to it, and and there, there were problems that my antivirus uh, mentioned. Ads all over the place. Yes, it's a bait and switch, which is another sleazy retail tactic in America. The old the old bait and switch. They use the word free movie. To get you in. That's correct. And they actually let you watch the movie. But I'm saying they are they are getting into your computer yeah. and well, making it do things. Well uh, to a lesser to a lesser extent. To a lesser degree. Uh, the big nose uh, blood sucking uh, greedy Mark Zucker Geek of Facebook he lures people to um, establish a Facebook account based on the word free uh -huh. and uh, once you're in there you just get bombarded mm -hmm. you know it's, mm -hmm. a, it's all uh, high-pressure sales um, that's what it's the internet is all about it's all about sales high-pressure hype sales hype and until spamming. people start wising up we are back in the days when the salesman put his foot in the door. Well, this is a cyber way of putting your, his That's foot correct. in the door. That's correct. Yeah, so, they so, don't allow you to shut the door. So all that is free on the internet has the catch of pushy sales when you think about it. Because every time you have anything free, you have ads connected to your channel. Or yeah. your profile. I had a website tell but me. But that's only the beginning. <coughs> I had that's a website tell me one time. Well, we make our. We made, are you sure you don't want to see these ads? This is how we make our money, pal. I'm not here to look at your ads. Whatever the website is, that's why I'm here. I can care less about somebody's ads. That's correct. But they keep throwing them up at you because that's how they make their money you know right that's why it's free yeah which means that corporate America will never ever give the consumer a, a, a true break there is no such well, and thing not unless they're regulated there's no such thing as really a best deal or a great deal people think they get a deal but they just jack up the regular selling price during sales inflation yeah. and price rising prices are the same thing however look what they're doing now with oil they're going nuts because oil is cheap it is destroying everything else that was based on the higher prices Venezuela Saudi Arabia all of these countries you know, are not getting the big price that they got for their oil before. And it is ruining their economies. Because that's what we're geared for in these economies. Whatever the price is of an object, God forbid it ever goes down. Okay? That's why they like inflation better than prices going down. Milk, the price of dairy really <coughs> never goes down below a certain point, you know. And milk is subsidized by our tax dollars, along with sugar, along go. with corn, along with a lot of peanuts, etc., etc., etc. We subsidize them. Remember back when uh, the, the government gave out cheese for the poor, mm -hmm. and etc.? 
because that stuff is subsidized. So they had it in government warehouses. And they gave it out free to the poor. Oh, is that those um, federal government uh, cans? Like if, if, if you get pork, you know, they'll, 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 there'll be a plain white label with a, a, a drawing of a, a pig and it'll say, it'll say pork USDA or something. Where, where are you buying this? No, it's, uh, I saw it one time. It's like, oh. it looks like some kind of food pantry item that the, like government donations. Well, I remember that the Econo brand was white. Remember back the Econo brand? The old No Frills yeah. and Pathmark. The, yeah. yeah. That was a white thing. Yeah. yeah. Just because it's not nationally advertised and it doesn't have a pretty label. That doesn't mean it's inferior. Uh, if you wanna, if you wanna um, eat healthier and stay away from toxic poison in your food, never buy and eat anything with a commercial. Uh, speaking of that, never. Some gentleman on one of your groups last night gave a pretty good, I guess, uh, workaround for these companies who do not wa wish to label their foods a GMO. He said, why don't we get the other companies to label their stuff not GMO? Hey, he's a smart cookie. Hey, he's a, he's a smart might have cookie. A chance. It might have a chance. Because the people that do not use GMO are proud of that fact. Exactly. So it's a it's a positive thing exactly. to put that on their label. Right. Right. Ah. Because the other companies are not going to do they're not going to label as far as it goes right now. They're not going to label their stuff GMO. Because they need if they label it, they know right away people ain't going to buy it. Of course not. Jeez. <clears throat> but so if they're they, not going to do it. But if they don't but if they reverse that psychology it might work. It might work. However, you know, it is a burden to the good companies then, but still in all, you know. And what about some companies that lie, that got caught lying about non-GMO? And organic. They do that today. Now you see. Calling themselves organic. Now do you, do you people understand now what happens when you deregulate companies? Yeah, they walk all over you. <laughs> Everybody knew that as far back as Teddy Roosevelt, for crying out loud. We knew that. Right. Of course, the, today they don't care because they're getting money for it. That's another thing in the bill. They now allow the uh, company or whatever to give more money uh, personally to the candidate. $324,000. That was another thing they slipped in the bill. The spending bill. Yeah. The your Republican tax money. Bastards. Your tax money. <clears throat> is not going towards helping you or, or poor people. It's going right into the pockets of the rich. More of it. More, more of your tax money. It, more of it, yes. Corporate welfare. Yeah. But that's okay. Oh, that's fine. As far as a, a conservative uh, corporatist uh, a politician, that's okay. all right. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. That's all all right, well... Um, Probably only have time for one quickie. Yeah, do one a reading. Uh, even though I only had one subject to mention <gasps> for the monologue, we ended up covering a lot Quite of a few subjects. We were very long-winded, but it was wor it was worth it. You okay? <laughs> Where? Wait a minute. Wait a Excuse minute. Me. I like to take my shillelagh and beat the crap out of this machine. Right, Where is the best location for viewing the Aurora Borealis? The Arctic Circle? And when is a good time to take a chance? Seeing the Northern Lights has long been a dream of mine. But the timing seems to be a matter of luck. Answer. Are you an adventurous type? Feel if like, so, feel like dodging polar bears? You can reduce the need for serendipity by taking a chairlift ride up to the Aurora Sky Station in Abrisco National Park 
in Lapland. Lapland, is that like Finland or something? The northernmost province of Finland. I thought Lapland was where uh, where go-go dancers only did lap dances in that area. This area, which is in the middle of the auroral zone, enjoys an unusual atmospheric the situation. The areola zone? <laughs> that keeps it virtually free of clouds. Really? Despite surrounding weather patterns. Must be very windy there though. And northern lights can be viewed nearly every night during the winter months. Oh, can't they also build something like that in Alaska? You know, using the same um, uh, what would be, latitude would be horizontal or longitude? Latitude. La la latitude. The same latitude? Who the hell knows? That's it, right? Yeah. Aurora Borealis. So we got to go to Finland. We, we got to go to uh, to lunch. Lapland. We got to go to Lapland to get a lap dance where we have lunch. All right, listen. We I will now the Laplanders be... have a lot of reindeer there or something. I, well, I, rain, saw, reindeer. I saw a movie once. I think it was called Mondo Kami. I, I, from what I understand, what my brother-in-law told me, caribou is just another like Indian word for reindeer. When you look at them, they have the same horns with the rounded, you know, furry looking horns with the rounded edges. Um, a reindeer in, in Scandinavia are used like donkeys. They're like pack animals, you know, and, and to pull things. They're, they're beasts of burden. Well, of course, Santa Claus has eight of them. Or is it nine? I'm, talk I'm talking about reindeers that don't fly. Oh. Anyway. We're going to go to William H. Moore the third, our official voice over artists, and then we will be back with the balance of the show. For Pagan Christmas Week 2014, Happy Saturnalia Brumalia. Mm -hmm. Yes. William Morrow. Wake up, people, because the truth is often, very often, a very, very hard pill to swallow. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. We're back. We're back. We're front. We're side. Thank you very much, William H. Moore the Third, for your promo and words of wisdom. Let it be. Oh man. Speaking yeah. words of wisdom. Let it be. Bumblebee. Now we return back to the, our readings. This week's uh, hap, ha, uh, Happy Pagan Christmas, Saturnalia Brumalia Week. Don't mind me. I don't feel well. 
The story made me feel as if I was living in the ancient new age. I am amazed by the findings of scientists from Australian University of New South Wales. Thousands of years ago, the Indian yogis found and taught the secret of breath. They said that more than 85% of body waste is eliminated through the breath. Through the what? The breath. Oh, breath. Breathing. They have now just found out that you lose more weight through breathing than through exercise or eating, not eating, or dieting, or whatever. It sounds... Sounds so hard to believe. Yet only less than 30% of our lungs' capacity is being used. Respiration. Somebody wants to go out? Respiration, right? Along the history of evolution, we can see that man's lifestyle has changed. And that he started eating while not hungry and not doing enough to convert carbon compounds into muscle fibers. We are no longer living at a time of hunting and growing vegetations for 8 to 12 hours a day. That results in triglycerides building up under the skin and causing obesity. Very health conscious people go to the gym or run for a half an hour a day, but that's not enough. Breathing techniques taught by the ancient people is the answer. Use 100% of our lung capacity at least half an hour every day. Oxidizing those carbon compounds Triglycerides and losing fat is only a secondary benefit. The primary benefit is optimum health. Physical, psychological, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. We should revive the ancient breathing techniques, including the ultimate yoga, Kira. Never heard of that. Never Actually, it's Kriya. K R I Y A. Kriya. Yeah, I've heard of Prasari Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, but I never heard of uh, Kyra. All those breath secrets are the answer to modern problems. That is the art of living. Hmm. Fascinating. I also fascinating. Fascinating. I, I also heard that a, uh, a man from India originally taught the Shaolin monks in in China kung fu. <laughs> so yeah, his name was David Carradine. No, no, silly. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, India is uh, an ancient civilization, almost as old as China. They have many secrets, many health secrets. From yoga to uh, Ayurveda, uh, herbal medicine, Ayurveda. Uh, the, ta the tastiest uh, vegan food is, is Indian recipes. I mean, in my opinion, you know, unless you're the type that can eat bland things, like Reverend Bill. More than a half a century ago, the United States severed diplomatic ties with Cuba and imposed a trade embargo with that nation. The objective, which likely made sense at the time, 
was to bring about the downfall of the Fidel Castro regime. But here we sit, all three decades later, and Cuba is still run by a totalitarian Castro. It has been painfully obvious for at least 25 years that the U.S. strategy regarding Cuba has been a dismal failure. That's true. Well, well what good did capitalism ever do uh, for the people of Latin America, for any Latin American country? Not nothing. If All not, they did was allow us to go in there and colonize and take their resources. Well, um, and if they didn't want to give us their resources, we paid them a little nominal, nominal fee. That's all. The, um, the governments are very, like the cops, are uh, very easy to buy off, to buy out. Or kill them. And they... Um, Coup d'etat. Well, Colombia, South America, is a... Uh, it's like a combination of a military dictatorship and a corporate plutocracy. I mean... Uh, what about Argentina with Pinochet and... And etc. What about the? You know, I what mean, about the, the 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 CIA getting rid of the uh, the legitimately elected Allende? I mean, the was that El Salvador? I think. I mean, in Colombia, um, companies are deregulated completely. I mean, an insurance company can raise their premiums and uh, decide that they don't want to pay out if you have a claim. You know where they learned that. United States. Uh, See, yeah. this is what I'm getting at. As far as uh, crony capitalism doing any good for Latin American countries, or any third world country, for that matter. No, it looks the same like Cuba. It's the Cuban people, not the Castro regime, who have suffered the most. Mm -hmm. It amazes me that it took so many years for America to change course. Yeah, it's like, uh, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and 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 over again and expecting a different result. True. Even more amazing is the reaction of people like U.S. Senators Bob Menendez, a Democrat of New Jersey, and Marco Rubio, a Republican of Florida. I guess Marco Rubio doesn't care about the suffering of uh, the poor Cuban people. No. He has his, so he doesn't no, care about doesn't. if anybody else has theirs. Who seem to think that a failed policy of 50 plus years just needs more time to work. More time. Yeah. More time. I guess the same thing goes for the Republican war on drugs and uh, you know um, you know th uh, arresting them and throwing them in prison uh, just needs time to work uh, as more as more people keep on uh, getting the getting the job done with drug trafficking regardless of, of it being against the law the black market uh, does is does not do anything for the uh, war on drugs I mean, keeping it on the black market instead of legalizing it. So Oliver North was selling drugs back then under Mr. Reagan. Maybe Getting that's money why for the country. Maybe that's why the the conservatives don't want With to war legalize drugs. drugs, because if they legalize drugs, they won't be able to make a fortune. On drug trafficking. Right now, the poppies growing in Afghanistan, the biggest crop in years, under American auspices. Yeah. Okay. Though, for those of you that don't know, the poppy is where opium and, and thus heroin comes from. 
poppy flowers. Yeah. Not not just poppy seed strudel. The reforms put forth by President Obama will not affect change overnight. But over a reasonable period of time, they will result in Cuba morphing into a more open democratic society to benefit the benefit of its people. Yeah, like like what happened with China. Well, China didn't morph into a more democratic. No, no, no. Well, being well, but, this capitalist system. But, but China uh, embraced uh, uh, free enterprise. You know, uh, uh, corp companies. If you can call it that. Yeah, China's a uh, global uh, uh, economy. I mean, uh, took part in the global economy. China and, is China today for one big reason. It's called the United States of America. Cheap labor. Who buys all of their shit. Okay? We have a trade deficit with China that is outstanding. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Zero six... BC, these two numerals and two letters don't mean much unless they are imprinted on a metal band attached to a falcon's lake. Then they can serve as a springboard to a fascinating history lesson about a peregrine and a crane. This is different than the tortoise and the hare. We pick up the story five and a half weeks ago, November the 10th, when ace birdwatcher Chris Tackett's, Tackax spotted a young peregrine perched in a tree in a North Arlington natural area. I see hawks uh, all the time. <clears throat> we used to have a owl that used to hoot in the morning here. Somewhere. Yeah, the wee hours. Yeah, you know, like sun up. Sun up, something like that. Yeah, well, I've seen, well, I have hawk nests by me across the street. He thought he glimpsed lightweight aluminum leg bands on the raptor, a means that researchers use to identify individual birds and to glean information about their travels, survival rates, and reproductive success. I got out my 400 millimeter lens and when the peregrine eventually flew, my camera was able to capture the lettering on the band 06 BC. We sent the information to the federal government's bird banding laboratory in Laurel, Maryland, and to New Jersey's Endangered Species Program, which in turn forwarded it to its New York State counterpart. Two weeks later, word came back. Because of those two numerals and the two letters, researchers determined that Peregrine 06 BC has been banded in New York City back in June. She was one of two Peregrine chicks that hatched at our nest site atop the Manhattan Psychiatric Center on Ward's Island. Barbara Saunders of the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation wrote in an email. Her male sibling didn't survive the fledgling. So it's great to know she's been successful so far. What's more, turns out that 06 BC's mommy 
was also banded as a chick in 2006 in Massachusetts. This youngster comes from a long line of aggressive females, which means she's got a lot of spunk. Yeah, for hunting. Her mother is quite aggressive and was originally banded as a chick in June 2006 atop the Goliath Crane at Four River Shipyard in Quincy, Massachusetts. This youngster's grandmother was also reported to be very aggressive. <laughs> I wonder how they deal with the cold having nests so high. As it turns out, the males in the family were feisty as well. The peregrines at the Goliath Crane are the only pair of peregrines I have ever encountered in which the male was just as aggressive as the female. I often have to fend off a hyper-aggressive female, but at this site, the pair could really pin me down as their dives were non-stop from both directions. The fastest, Ooh. The fastest Ooh. living creature on Earth. Swooping in on them. <laughs> it's the peregrine falcon. Yeah. That's not when they dive, I mean. Yeah. And they do that when you're bothering them. Huh? They do that when you're bothering them. Dive? Yes, so they're they... aggressively attacking you. No, I thought they dive to hunt. No, no, no. They're diving at this guy who's trying to see what's going on. Oh, he's getting close. That's correct. Right. To the nest. Yeah. So the, the mother is protective. Thus, because 06 BC was banded, we are able to learn about not only her mother, but her grandparents. Think of bird banding as a way to access an avian ancestry.com. As for the, the Goliath crane, it lived up to its name when it was installed in the mid-1970s. The 315-foot tall crane was the largest in the Western Hemisphere. For three decades, the crane was the backbone of the shipbuilding industry. After the Four River shipyard closed, it was dismantled and shipped to Mongolia, Romania, where it is still in use. There is no word yet on whether any peregrines are nesting on the relocated Goliath crane. But rest assured, history and natural history are intertwined worldwide and banding birds can provide a great starting point to learn more about both. seeing uh, people do the right thing and, and rescuing and, and uh, re-establishing uh, threatened and endangered species of animals instead of allowing them to become extinct like they sadly did with so many other creatures, you know, so, you know, my congratulations to these people that are out there to protect our environment and its creatures. Which soon will not allow environmentalists and scientists to get their advice. No, Only representatives of business. Because, yeah, that's what the Republicans you were re-elected are for. They're for profit, business. 
above above all, above everything else, above the planet, above its creatures, above people, children already born. Yes. It's prophet before everything. Right. Prophet before the planet. That is correct, sir. And uh, when the planet Earth is damaged beyond repair and there's no turning back, all these uh, rich corporatists will uh, have the um, have the ability to then uh, eat their money to survive. Well, they will. They will have. According their, to Bible prophecy, Matthew twenty-four, Jesus will come before them. Otherwise, no flesh would be saved alive on the planet during the Great Tribulation, World War III. That includes uh, all the uh, right-wing, zealot, evangelical, born-again, Holy Rose. Yeah, the ones that are going to be left behind. <laughs> they, they feel they're going to be raptured and, yeah, and they will avoid the Tribulation. Yeah, yeah, they do. But they ain't got it right. See, that's a problem, isn't it? You don't got it right. You got it wrong. Yeah. Um, you can listen to uh, what the Bible really says from the God Project with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman every Sunday from our uh, Mega Life 21 Progressive uh, Internet Talk Radio Station, and uh, you will find that a link at the top of NewsletterCensor.com as well as from our Facebook pages. I forgot to say this before when we were talking about Put Walker. Put. Put. I see that YouTube. When you go somewhere and you want to watch a full movie, say Star Trek something or other, bum bum bum. Yeah. They'll let you download it. They'll let you watch it for two ninety nine. I have an itch in the middle of my forehead. I hope nobody does. I hope nobody does that falls for that shit. You know. So they're lying about the words free. Well, even so, what are you, why? what's free to go to their website? Probably to type in what you want. <laughs> But uh, the thing of it is, I hope they don't make any money at it. Because it's only going to lead to worse things. YouTube was supposed to be free. Period. Like a library. I used to find full-length movies for free. Yeah. Old ones there are still there, I guess. Yeah, old but, ones. But it was supposed to be a library. A gathering together of all kinds of stuff from all around the world, free to access and whatever. And now they want you to pay for it. Yeah, First you, there were ads, now the money. Yeah, one time you did not have ads, uh, video ads attached to your YouTube videos. It was only um, an ad if you wished to click on it that appeared. If you wish to click on it, now they force you to watch a video ad. Yeah. You know. So that uh, gives me uh, pisses me off. Now they want you to pay to watch a full-length movie. Uh, it's almost like they they constantly have these these corporate meetings to see what new ideas they can come up with on how to screw the people how to screw over the consumer. If you'll notice, you see that um, much of the content on YouTube, YouTube is put up there by other people, not by the site. It's Joe Foppendoach from down the street makes a video of his cat and he puts it up on YouTube. 
you go there and you type in cat videos, and here his video pops up. And you watch it. Yeah, you had uh, you had buffs of, uh, of different subjects. Let's say somebody was an old classic cartoon buff. They would put up complete cartoons, and you go there, and you watch your uh, Betty Boops and your Felix the Cat, or and your so or song. And was that Tugboat Willie? Who was the the first Mickey Mouse? Steamboat. Steamboat Willie. Willie, and you know things like that. You know, but there's uh, many other. Uh, categories, genres that are available, but this that's week, what it was supposed to be. This deal yeah. now with the, the pay it's money, money, money stuff is crap. Pay per view. <sighs> Governor Christie's name is being removed from a list of defendants in a federal class action lawsuit related to the George Washington Bridge lane closings after it was merged into a similar suit according to court papers and an attorney. Christie had been named in one federal lawsuit involving people who claimed that they suffered damages because of missed appointments or other issues related to a regional traffic jam caused by the lane closures last year. Rochelle Park attorney Barry Epstein had filed another suit in which Christie was not named on behalf of Bergen County cab companies and individuals. <coughs> The governor's name is being removed from the list of defendants, which includes the Port Authority and former and present state officials, because no evidence has emerged. I shall repeat, no evidence has emerged that he was involved in the closing. He said, his, Epstein said his firm, the Epstein Law Firm, which is now lead attorney for defendants in the consolidated case, expects to file a new complaint sometime this week after a judge gave the go-ahead on Monday. Emails first reported by the Record newspaper showed that Christie's aides were involved in the closures, making it appear that they were a politically motivated effort to cause problems for Fort Lee's mayor. Epstein said that Christie's name could be added to the lawsuit if credible evidence appears that he was involved. Why on earth would Chris Christie expect the Democrat to, to, to support him in re-election? It's beyond me. They did. The dictator Chris Christie. Christie is expected to announce within months whether he will run in the Republican primaries to determine the party's 2016 presidential candidate. Mm. Now, Mr. Christie, New Jersey is supposed to pay into its pension fund every quarter. Mr. Christie just got it passed. The Democrats failed to override it that he will only pay at the end of the year. So he can use the rest of the money to balance the budget and give tax breaks to his cronies. Now here the uh, Congress in Washington uh, approved uh, uh, pension cuts. They didn't approve a pay raise for Mr. Joe Biden? Oh, really? What yeah. about them? What about they get theirs automatically. Every year. Three to five percent, whatever Joe it is. Biden say something about it? Yeah, he was mad. <laughs> Why don't they just come clean and expose the whole lot of them on national TV? 
I mean, if you're pushed up against the wall, and they keep on pushing and pushing and pushing, do they don't do it. What sycophants? What what what? Corporate ass kisses. I mean, mm. if I was, if if somebody was making me mad enough, eventually you're not going to take it anymore. Depends on whether you'll get some more money from the corporations. Then you'll take anything. You know what I mean? Well, of course, you're uh, a whore. somebody like, um, of course, if, uh, a, a famous uh, or a very popular Democrat in the spotlight, if they um, do a big expose on national TV, you know, let spilling the beans. Mm -hmm. Letting the cat out of the bag and exposing the lot of them. But it doesn't do any good for those ideologically committed red states. They're still fighting the Civil War. Okay? You can't get at ideology. They must repent. It is up to them. Very hateful. It is like a drug addict or an alcoholic. He must make the decision that he will go into rehab or whatever. You can't do it for them. And no amount of uh, facts or experiments or whatever is going to alter their ideology. It's true. Their convictions. You get the word? They are convinced of their convictions. You will not touch them. Touching them is an attack on them. Good. And they will defend them to the last ounce. They're wrong. I know, but that don't do any good. I just said that. Even what is it? What is it? Buddha or Confucius or one of them said, uh, the beginning of knowledge is to know you don't know everything. Well, they don't know that. A lot of they things think they, they know everything. A lot of things they don't know. So exposing their party for the corruption that it represents will not do any good to Has determine who they will vote for. Has it done it? And, you know, honestly, the like I said before, the Democrats in the spotlight, they, you only, I only read about their statements online. I never see any of them do an expose interview on, on national TV. You're not going to see that on corporate television. No, not even on MSNBC has anybody really exposed what's going on. I just said it before with Sony Pictures. They capitulated. Even though they spent all that money on the movie. That's correct. They capitulate. It's it, the movie business, books, etc., are supposed to be examples of free thought. Yeah. No censorship. Right. We don't have censorship in this country. Oh, Falwell and all these people they wanted to put censorship on Larry Flint and 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 and, and the Penthouse and and, and, and you know Cuccione and and, and and Hugh Hefner with Playboy and stuff. We don't want that in this country. But we got it. Wherever money's involved. Yeah. Like with Sony Pictures. Like I said, they could have thwarted Mr. Kim Um Yu or whatever the hell his name is by putting a damn thing out there for free on the internet. Who the hell's going to stop it on the internet? So they just simply allowed North, Korean, North Korea's leader. The censor. In America. To censor something in America. In America. 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 Yeah. Morons. M-O-R-A-N-S. <laughs> Mutter's Day. M-U-T-R. Mutter. <laughs> oh, my God. America. 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 <laughs> dem da. Dem da immigrants. Uh, continuing on the breath situation. Planning to shed a few pounds? Yeah. After all the holiday excess is over? Better check your carbon footprint. Contrary to beliefs held even by 
nutritionists and physicians and physical trainers and people who should know better, lost weight does not leave our bodies as heat or get converted into muscle or get passed out in the shit. It largely leaves the body in the form of carbon dioxide exhaled from our lungs. You know, that's how the female mosquito can uh, um, locate us. Track you, yeah. By carbon monoxide, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> carbon dioxide exhaled. Carbon. Dioxide. Um, yeah. According to an article published Tuesday in the British Medical Journal, losing weight requires unlocking the carbon stored in fat cells and lungs are the primary excretory organ for fat. When someone sets a goal of losing weight without losing lean muscle, she is in effect planning to metabolize the triglycerides stored in her fat tissues. Cells. Chemically speaking. Triglycerides must be oxidized or broken down into their component parts. Oxidizing 10 kilograms of fat will take 29 kilograms of inhaled oxygen. Okay. And will produce 28 kilograms of carbon dioxide. And 11 kilograms of water. Losing weight requires unlocking the carbon stored in fat cells. Didn't I read that? No. Plus, no, it's the second thing. Yeah. Reinforcing that often heard refrain of eat less, move more, the authors of the primer on weight loss wrote, given what they call the widespread misconceptions about weight loss, the biochemistry of the process ought to be taught in high school and university biochemistry courses. Well, oxygen, just like pure water and uh, essential fatty acids, all three of them are very important. Not just for survival, but for optimum health. Up. Check the time. Oh, the time. Oh, how are we doing on time? We got one last time for one last reading. The first sign that President Obama was willing not only to excuse, but to continue or cover up the execrable policies of torture illegal detainment, extraordinary rendition, and human rights violations came when he stated after the election that it was time to look forward, not backward. Rather than prosecute those apparent actions. Often I have thought of how little ground I would gain if after I committed a heinous crime, the police came to arrest me and I said, Now, gentlemen, let's look to the future, not the past. This crime is in the past. Let's move forward, not backward. I don't think that would work out for me or for most ordinary citizens. What kind of democracy are we running when those who govern are so many miles above the law they can't even see the people they've been elected to serve? I'm outraged that no one is accountable for this, for the lies that got us into an endless war, <coughs> the deaths of so many the violations of human decency done in the name of Americans 
for whom such acts are sources of horror and shame. The shock waves generated by the Senate's report on CIA torture reminded me of Claude Rains' reaction to gambling at Rick's Cafe in Casablanca. I'm shocked! Remember who Claude Rains was? Remember the actor? I just don't remember. The Invisible Man. Oh yeah, he was, Rains. he was very popular back in the day. So we are all shocked at the report. Because as we all know, we do not engage in the same barbaric acts that they do. We don't kidnap and behead. We only waterboard and perform the latest innovation in interrogation, rectal hydration. Rectal hydration? That's correct. Enemas? Cold water enemas, I guess. All they have to do is um, use sodium pentothal on a polygraph. It's a lot. It's 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 way more credible than torture. We have been at war since 911. Undeclared, of course. No one behaves honorably in war. During the Civil War, we had our own. Abu Ghraib at Andersonville, Georgia. Yeah, they didn't have any anesthesia back then either. The notorious Confederate prison camp. Lack of medics. Where thousands of Union POWs died of dysentery and scurvy. Yeah. I mean, a gunshot wound uh, quickly became infected and they amputated. They just didn't have the medical abilities to... Well, it wasn't a hospital. Yeah, there were... It was a prisoner of war camp. Yeah, I mean, in general, the Civil War. And those who survived looked as emaciated as inmates of Auschwitz. Let us not forget Executive Order 9066, which President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed two months after Pearl Harbor, resulting in the internment of West Coast Japanese Americans in remote sections of California, Arizona, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, and Arkansas. Yeah. Disrupting their lives, leaving many in lifelong shame because of unfounded rumors. They didn't do it to Muslims after 9-11. That Japanese truck farmers would spray produce with arsenic and engage in acts of sabotage. You gotta speak up because of your stupid heating system. War! Declared or otherwise is an ugly business. In Jean Girardo play Tiger at the Gates. Hecuba says during war we imprison the rights of men. Why then should anyone be shot? Very little surprises me today, if any. I mean, um, you were telling me about uh, the uh, Michelle Bubblehead uh, Bachman and her husband are in hot water? That's correct. Criminal investigation! Couldn't happen to a better idiot. Two idiots. Two idiots. Well, you know, they used to think they could, speaking of ideology, Perhaps ideology, we're not sure. But speaking of it, they used to think they could change gays 
into normal. He had a clinic which he ran using the Bible. Yeah, um, doing performing like an exorcism. I think I read that too. Who knows what the <coughs> hell he was doing? The thing of it is, it's crap. Okay, it's not biblical. It's, it's not. It's a cult. Rational. I read. Um, a an article where somebody in prominence in the media, or was it could have been a politician, what somebody had stated was that if a religion does not allow for questioning for questions, then it's automatically a cult. Like, in other words, if you cannot honestly debate and have a, I don't know, a, a study period. Yeah, otherwise you've got dictatorship. These are, the, these are the rules, these are the dicta, and you follow them, period. The cult is written in stone. Nazis were a cult. You know. You know, and they're starting to uncover that uh, much of the right wing uh, organizations have a uh, hidden a Satanism in them. Well, you don't even have to go there. No, their 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 way of thinking is uh, is they of, don't think is of the devil, huh? They don't think. That's the problem. They don't have open minds. They follow dicta, which someone else established. Yeah. Before them. They're not independent free thinkers. That's right. And that's their problem. They don't have minds of their own. So so they can't question. So even if you debate them on national TV and make them look like, like buffoons, blithering idiots, their following will still follow them and vote for them. They will attack you. How do you How attack do you fact? Attack, you attack them. You 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 went into personal attack. Well, you see, Bill Riley does. Well, they Bill do Bill O'Reilly does it every year. Bill There's a war on Christmas. There ain't no stinking war on Christmas, Bill. There's not even a Christ in Christmas. But every year, it's the same damn thing. You know what he cares about? Say he something bad about a Christmas. He cares. Tree. About, he cares about the. He don't really care about the positive aspects of the Christmas holiday season. He cares about people making money during the Christmas holiday season. He cares about if people don't celebrate the pagan Christmas, then therefore whoever makes money the on Christmas suffers. won't make money, huh? The economy suffers. Because everything with a Republican is profit, business, so. Anyway, have a safe and happy uh, pagan uh, holiday season, pagan Christmas, Saturnalia, Brumalia uh, season. Don't drive drunk. Be Ooh. safe. Spend uh, quality time with loved ones, and uh, you know, use Don't that. Use that as a reason to celebrate. Don't be so damn materialistic, you you Americans, as you always are, every year. And uh, going into more debt, uh, spending money that you don't have, and totally tune out. I mean, I shut the TV off. Totally tune out all those super annoying Christmas commercials, songs. They're absolutely overbearing, obnoxious. They, they asked a, a bunch of uh, college students right. the other day to sing Jingle Bells. Yeah. They didn't even know the song. They don't even know the capitals of states <laughs> in the United States. That too. They, they, they don't know anything. Uh, Mr. Steve is uh, screaming Steve out Steve is there. coming in. Yeah. Wow, his, he's got... Oh, come on, Stevie. Well, now he's... Steve's a cat, by the way. Knocked Mr. Billy went down. And knocked Billy Jr. down. 
What's that thing? I don't know. What's that sound? It sounds like a vehicle. Yeah. Something. Oh, it's a, it's an SUV. Oh. Double part. Okay, people. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Yeah, don't shoot anybody at the turkey table. Uh, well, that's if you're having turkey. Well, or a ham table. I'm having a uh, deep dish homemade lasagna made oh by my. my made by my <coughs> sister Lisa. I'm having lasagna too. And I think Christmas Day usually we have a a glazed smoked ham, but oh my God. don't quote me on that. Oh. I don't know, but most likely we're going to have leftovers from the pagan Christmas Eve because. Um, so much food is made, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, all right, say so long to these people. So long, people. Yeah. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.